She's got long legs and short shorts, but she ain't got no teeth. She wears a red bandana on her head, and she smiles so, so sweet. She'll steal your heart, a very first step should rip apart your soul. She'll torture your mind and waste your time and drag you down the road. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Welcome back to the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast, episode 17. This is Ashley Feller. I'm a third generation Panama City native, musician, and singer songwriter. Last week, I met with Brad Stevens, who owns and runs Sunjammers Water Sports, located at 1129 Back Avenue. Stay tuned for the full interview. This week, I'll be sharing most of the music events for the upcoming weekend of February 26th through 28th, as well as some other fun happenings in the area as well. I'm hoping to share all kinds of public events. If you are having a yard sale, or you'd like me to help promote a special happening, please DM the podcast on Facebook, or you can email me at ashley.feller at gmail.com. The podcast is now available to stream on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, CastBox, and Google Podcasts. I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed and shared the podcast with all their salty friends. You can also find the podcast on Facebook as well as Instagram. You'll find the links in the comments below. Get your favorite drink ready and enjoy the show. These are the music events for Friday, February 26th. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? Begin your weekend with jazz by class act in the dining room at the Shrimp Boat. Then at 6 p.m. on Friday, savor a delicious margarita while you experience the music of Anthony Peebles, or you could also visit Little Village at 6 to see Phil Mullen play under the palapa. Or you can boogie on down to Tap Room for nice cold craft beers and beautiful music by Woods the Band. John Cannon is playing Friday night at Uncle Ernie's on their beautiful open air deck starting at 7 p.m. Alternatively, you can enjoy some great music by String Theory at the House of Bourbon also at 7 p.m. This Friday night, Library on Beck features tunes by David Owen, and closing out your Friday night is Casey and Dave at the Salty Hobo at 9 p.m. The market at St. Andrews is every Saturday morning and opens at 8 a.m. in the lot next to the Shrimp Boat. There are a number of fantastic arts and crafts vendors, food trucks, and live music brought to you by Floriopolis that begins at 10 a.m. This week, the featured musician is Chase Pospichel. The market is always interested in different musicians, so if you'd like to play at the market, please email me at ashley.feller at gmail.com, or you can always private message the podcast. The Floriopolis Music and Art Tent is usually located by the food trucks on Beck Avenue. These are the music events for Saturday, February 27th. Following the market, stroll over to the tap room for your first beer of the day at 1230 and relax by their beautiful fire pits while you listen to Rhett Plash. Gillaran's Island is performing at Little Village starting at 1 p.m. If you still need more jazz, Class Act is delighted to be making music for you at the Shrimp Boat starting at 5. This Saturday night, Hunter and Tony will be picking and gridding for y'all at Los Anahitos at 6. Jeffrey Bruett will be at Tap Room also at 6. And if you haven't experienced Uncle Ernie's new open air deck, I cannot recommend it more. It has the most beautiful view of historic St. Andrews Bay, and it just so happens to be that local favorite Jay Smith will be sharing his music at 7 p.m. String Theory is back for a second dose at the House of Bourbon starting at 7 p.m. And Scott Hightower is back in action and closing out your Saturday night at the Library on Beck starting at 9 p.m. These are the music events for Sunday, February 28th. Sunday is always a fun day in historic St. Andrews. You get to soak up the sun, enjoy a delicious brunch at Alice's on Bayview at 10 a.m. with Jay Ray, then promenade down Beck Avenue for a beautiful afternoon of music at Little Village by the one and only Janelle Frost. Anthony Peebles is back at Tap Room at 6 p.m. 
and then bring your wonderful evening to a close looking out over beautiful St. Andrews Bay with your drink of choice at Uncle Ernie's with music by the lovely Brick Washore. This concludes most of the events happening in historic St. Andrews for the weekend of February 26th through 28th. Special thanks to Ken Schaefer for keeping us informed about all the music happenings on Oh Boy Music and Salty Sounds in St. Andrews on Facebook. For more information on music events in the Panama City area, please follow both pages on Facebook. Thank you so much, Ken, for everything you do. entering the best time of year to go on the historic St. Andrews walking tour. The Publishing Museum leads the free guided tours every Wednesday and Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Wouldn't that make for a great Friday lunch date with your office crew? Grab a working lunch at Uncle Ernie's, take the walking tour with your co-workers, and start your weekend off early in St. Andrews. This walking tour is a great way to get yourself down here during the day when the shops are open. It's healthy, it has outside fresh air, and it's light walking, it's educational, and it puts you right here where you want to be, in Salty St. Andrews. The next time you're in historic St. Andrews, don't forget to stroll by Janie's Fence and check out the Butterflies exhibit. See if you can find the Butterfly by Jennifer Hodges, and Floriopolis would love to know how many flowers you can find in the art. The Butterflies exhibit, sponsored by Bubba T. Bird, will be up through the end of March and is part of the Floriopolis Art and Public Places program. Floriopolis invites the public on Wednesdays 2 to 5 p.m. to create songbird art for the next fence exhibit. All supplies are provided, all ages, and there's no charge because you don't get to keep your art. It gets displayed and then recycled into the next exhibit. Are you interested in creating your own art? Registration is open for classes at Gypsy Beach Treasured Creations. Learn how to use resin in your art with instructor Barbie. The class is Saturday, March 20th. Register in person or call 904-451-3071. The 5th Annual Salty Dog Day event celebrating all things dog in Salty St. Andrews will be held Saturday, February 27th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. This dog-friendly event will be an extension of the market at St. Andrews with proceeds benefiting Operation Spay Bay. Riley, the current Salty Dog Mayor of St. Andrews, will greet visitors to the market and will announce the new winner of the Salty Dog Mayor's Contest. The market will include unique Salty Dog t-shirts, dog merchandise vendors, veterinarians, treat stations, dog play area, food, music, shopping, and entertainment as well as a blessing of the dogs, adoptions, and a silent auction. Hope to see y'all there. If you have a soft spot in your heart for dogs, then you should donate to the Salty Dog Day food drive that lasts until February 28th. This dog food drive benefits Operation Spay Bay and Bonnie's Purpose. Please drop off donations through Salty Dog Day in St. Andrews, which is on February 28th, at the following drop-off sites. Adonia, Amavita Coffee, Little Village, Crepe and Cream Food Truck, The Salty Hobo, Suncoast Pets, Sun Jammers, Tap Room, The Market at St. Andrews on Saturdays, 8 to 1 p.m., The Panama City Publishing Museum, which is open 1 through 5.30 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, and also 10 to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. Their wish list includes puppy and adult food, harnesses and leashes of all sizes, dog toys, towels, especially beach towels, bleach, Clorox wipes, pee pads, paper towels, cat litter, Purina kitten chow, and wet cat food of any brand. If you donate to this food drive, you're sure to make a salty dog's day. This 
past Wednesday, I met with salty local Brad Stevens at Floriopolis to learn more about his kayak shop, Sun Jammers Water Sports. It was a great opportunity to learn more about Brad and how his business has originated and evolved. I had a great time recording this, and I hope you'll enjoy listening too. Today, we're here at Floriopolis with Brad Stevens, who is the owner and operator of the Sun Jammers Water Sports here in historic St. Andrews. Thank you so much for being here today, and good morning. I was reading your website the other day and read that Sun Jammers Water Sports has been in business since 1999. Uh, how and where did this begin, and where's your store located now? So we started in 99. I was trying everything I could not to go to college. I was just trying not to extend school or anything like that. I just wanted to work and create. It's all I wanted to do. So that's kind of how I convinced my parents to give me some startup money. Instead of going to college, let me try the school of hard knocks. Um, and that was 99, so 22 years ago. Um, you know, we started, uh, we built a building behind my parents' real estate office on the far west end of the beach. And it was mostly just rentals with a little bit of retail involved. And then we, as retail grew and we sold that property off, uh, we moved to a Highway 79 location. And then about seven years ago, we moved to St. Andrews and I ran two stores for a little while. Well, I don't like running lots of stores, so I wasn't very good at it. So everything was suffering. So we closed this Highway 79 store, moved the entire operations to historic St. Andrews and um, been here ever since. That's awesome. And what's been your favorite part of owning and running the shop here in St. Andrews? Meeting the community. By far, the reason I do what I do is to connect with people one-on-one. I can't stand e-commerce, even though this morning I literally just launched a new e-commerce store for us, but I don't like it. That was a, definitely a necessary evil, but it's just connecting with the people, the community. And um, I really like walking out the front door and just kind of sniffing and smelling some sort of food and that's where i'm gonna eat for lunch that day so i walk there and eat that's that sounds like a wonderful uh privilege to have from being here and uh what do you believe is the most significant challenge of being a merchant here in st andrews uh post hurricane so post hurricane problems in st andrews i really that's a man that's a fantastic question because the community has supported us so much post hurricane. It's, I don't want to say like it never happened, but from a business standpoint, it almost never happened. Yeah, there was a little, uh oh, four ish months there right after the hurricane, but it came back with such energy and the community's excited again and they want to support the smaller store. So, you know, I've said very unpopular um, opinion is Hurricane Michael 20 years from now will look back and be the biggest blessing Bay County's ever had. It's extremely hard to hear that and kind of experience that when you're in it and everybody's in a different phase of in it. But, I mean, it was so good for our community when you can just step back. It really brought the community closer together. And back to earlier question, I love being around people. I love connecting with people. So anything that kind of pulls us closer together, you know, I look as a positive. Absolutely. I definitely remember that feeling of community following those uh, first initial uh-oh months after the hurricane. And so also, I'd like to ask you, I know you've got a large variety of goods in your store. Uh, how do you go about determining the merchandise that you carry in the store? And is there a particular product that you uh, use yourself regularly? So we are first and foremost a kayak store. And I grew up sailing Hobie catamarans. I raced them all over the country. So when Hobie got into kayaks in 97, um, I was kind of like, that's kind of weird. Kind of, I don't know what they're doing there because I was a sailboat guy. And um, funny story, we started off our store as a sailboat store with a few kayaks in the corner. Now we are a full-blown kayak store that sells multiple brands with a few sailboat parts in the corner. So we've done a complete 180. But we kind of run the lens through everything. Um, there's kind of two lens. One, will it help us sell a Hobie kayak? We're very specific about all of our manufacturers know Hobie's our bread and butter. We love Hobie kayaks. Um, every other kayak has its place, but... Are those stepping stones to get somebody to Hobie? Um, or our other lens, does it fill a need for the local community? So we get people coming in, oh, we're tired of driving to the beach to buy this. If we hear that enough, we'll look and explore and selling it in our store. We have so many people say, thank you so much for offering this so we didn't have to go to the beach. Now, I don't want to create a big beach town rivalry here, but when you live in a community, it's really nice to be able to drive two or three miles 
to buy it versus going over the bridge. Once you go over the bridge, you almost have to go all the way to Pier Park and um, to get specialty retail type items. And um, so that's kind of how we find our new products is the community really drives our product offerings. And tagging me on social media always helps. Awesome. Uh, how is Sunjammers unique from other big box stores, stores like REI, West Marine, or other major retailers of that nature? So we like to think we're different. Um, we used to have a tagline, we do more than just read the brochure. We use every product that we sell. Um, we use, we may not use it routinely, it may not be the best product for us personally, but we have used it. So we can talk about it, we can tell you what we like, what we don't like about it. And just because we don't like a feature out of a product, if it's right for you, the negative for us could very well be a positive for you. But just the fact that we use the product, um, I'm in the store routinely, I have been for 21 years, I, I feel like I'm there more than I'm home. Ron has worked with us six and a half years now. He came in as a retirement job and it turned into a full-time retirement job for him um, from his love of kayaking. He just wanted to be around kayakers and kayaks and he loves the industry. He loves helping people learn how to paddle and you know, routinely you can come in and Ron sitting in the middle of the floor with a paddle on his hand, demonstrating how to properly paddle or you know how the strokes go and that kind of stuff. And it's always fun watching Ron get out of the store. Um, so we tell everybody, Ron's our old guy. So when you come in, um, talk to him like an old deaf dog. You may feel like you're yelling at him, but you're really doing him a service because he's not having to guess what you say because um, Ron likes to turn his hearing aids down quite a bit. So sometimes you just gotta yell at him. Oh, wow, that's awesome. So, with that being said, does Sun Jammers help customers book and plan kayak escapades or kayak fishing tours? And if so, how can folks go about that? So, we are, we, we currently offer guided kayak fishing trips. We have a couple um, local kayak anglers that, um, that we pair people with, kind of depending upon the angler's needs, what they're looking for, as well as the guide schedule. Because nobody's a full time guy, they all have quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, real jobs. And then this is kind of their side hustle or something they just enjoy doing. So people just contact the store. We talk to them a little bit to make sure that, you know, that they're a good fit for kayak fishing trips. And then um, we, we collect all their contact information. We reach out to our guides and kind of see who's available to, to most closely work with the customer's um, schedule. And then um, we go from there. We are wanting to and getting closer to offering um, guided eco tours. We used to do this in the past. We've always struggled with hiring consistently on this. So, you know, just basic showing up on time, you know, being courtesy, you know, with the people being, you're their tour guide. So you're basically their best friend while you're on the water. And I'm sort of a micromanager. So having my name of Sun Jammers associated with something that I don't have the capacity to do 100% of if need be, um, we've struggled finding somebody to fill that need for us. So we've actually pulled that part back. And this year, I think we may have found the right people. So we're gonna slowly ease back into that. Um, but that's just our biggest problem is hiring quality people that wanna be eco tour guides. So if you're listening and that's you, hit me up. And how would they go about contacting you? We're, I like to tell everybody, I'm the easiest person in the world to get a hold of. If you just do at Sunjammers on any of the social media platforms, it all dings one of my two phones that that I carry around with me. Um, I run have to carry two phones because we have a couple brands that we also have. And you can only have so many social media accounts on a phone at a time. Right. So sometimes I have two phones. I have which accounts this phone on. And it's the, we call those first world marketing problems. Um, but I love it. I relate to that. I do the very same thing. I have several phones for that reason. And uh, my next question is, uh, do you kayak yourself? Do you do uh, kayak fishing? So I love kayak fishing. Um, I used to always say, if you're on the water and you don't have a fishing pole with you, then you're just wasting your time on the water. But uh, about a year and a half ago, we started selling a brand called Eddie Line Kayak. So this was Ron's favorite kayak line and Ron's own 20 something um, Eddie Line kayaks over his kayaking career. So I waited six years to be able to sell that brand. Um, because there was another dealer in Destin when she retired, we were next in line. So Ron paired me, once again, sitting in the floor, showing me how to do it with a, with a good quality sit-inside kayak and a nice paddle. And now I've really, really taken in the last year, year and a half, a real passion for just paddling without fishing. But I literally do it all. Um, I paddleboard a little. It's not my most favorite thing to do ever. I would rather be kayaking than paddleboarding. But I definitely see the appeal of paddleboarding to a lot of people. And most of the time, if you can catch me 
if I'm not in the store and you think I should be in the store, I'm probably just out back our back door. Um, I call it product testing a lot. So I'm out there playing on some of our product, um, just seeing you know how it is. Even if it's a product that's not right for my body type and my body size, um, it's still I can still learn the characteristics of the boat or the paddleboard. So when people come in, you know I can go. No, 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 this will work for you as well. I know you're buying it for your daughter or your wife, but this will also work for you for that 10% of the time you're going to be the one using it. That's wonderful that you go and you experience the products themselves. Uh, can you describe your most uh, memorable kayak experience? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> and I don't know why, because they're so, every time you go out on the water, it is. It's different every single time. You can paddle, let's just take Crooked Creek for example. You can launch at the Crooked Creek Bridge and head north. And while it's the same every single time, it's like the first time every single time. So my most favorite is literally every time I get to go. Um, I don't have that one thing that, that sticks out or you know, I launch under the Lynn Haven Bridge and shoot across to um, that, all that vacant land that's over there that's, you know, it's still God's country. It's just like it was, you know, back in the day. And there's redfish tailing everywhere, you know, and I have so many memories of doing that. I also launched over at Crooked Island and chasing giant um, speckled trout. There's just everywhere, every time I think about another trip, it almost replaces the last trip that I thought about for my favorite. That in and of itself is really amazing that we live in such a paradise and that we're so blessed to have those experiences. So um, if you ever do get a day off and you were able to spend the day uh, at your leisure in historic St. Andrews, how would you choose to spend your day? So I normally start my coffee off at Almavita and then I come work a little bit. That is that that's my passion. It's like you work all the time. Work is my hobby, so if I can't be with my wife or my kids somewhere because they have real jobs and they go to school, um, hang out at the shop a little while. Even if the store's open, I just like hanging out in the store. Um, because of the once again those people. Lunch at Little Village, um, it's I'm a Addicted to the Todd Bowl. I don't know why, but the Todd Bowl that yes. Finns is unbelievably good. And um, then just walking around and smelling the smells, good and bad. I love the smell of oysters. I don't know why. So every now and then that, that whiff behind hunts is, mm -hmm. smells good to me. I mean, I don't want to smell it all the time. I don't want a candle of it. Uh, but just walking around and enjoying Oaks by the Bay Park. It's just, there's so much to do in St. Andrews and getting just outside of St. Andrews, um, Lake Huntington Park. The city has done a fantastic job rehabbing that. I, I drank coffee on those swings the other morning, just sitting there watching the sunrise. Even though I live three quarters of a mile down the bay, I have the same view. It was fun to go sit on that public space in the park and just think, why am I the only one sitting here drinking my coffee this morning? There should be 15 people down here doing the same thing. Um, and it's just the lack of awareness that, that park is there. Absolutely. I grew up around the corner from that park in between Molitor and Michigan, mm -hmm. and I used to visit that park all the time, and it's it's definitely improved. Uh, so St. Andrews has been a, in a perpetual state of recovery in one way or another for many years. Uh, what changes are you looking forward to seeing in the next five to ten years here in this area? So I'm really excited for Victor Dover's uh, St. Andrews plan to come out with um, all of his particulars like they did for downtown, like he's done for historic districts all over the country. You know, from looking at city ordinances and regulation that, that helps business, also that hurts business. And just the fact that I think it's our time. Downtown has a lot of momentum right now and I could not be happier about that because that was us the three years pre-storm. Um, we had a lot of momentum. So I'm that big guy, I'm the firm believer that rising tide floats all boats. So downtown has this massive momentum that's going to roll over to us um, next. I think we're always gonna piggyback on kind of who has the momentum. So downtown is crushing it right now. I could not be more proud of our merchants downtown or because we're very close with most of those merchants down there. And the next three to five years, just this, coming back to life to pre-Hurricane Michael, we're not there yet. Everybody says, man, St. Andrews is doing great. I'm like, we are. We're not quite as good as we were pre-Hurricane. And I don't know exactly why that is, but you can feel the energy and the vibe starting to come back. And um, obviously, the Rona's messed that up a little bit. You know, it's kind of knocked our winds out of our sails a little bit more. But um, just kind of the community really coming back home to St. Andrews is what I'm most excited about. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much for taking time to be here today. And just one more question. Uh, how can folks find you on social media or elsewhere? So just nobody wants to get a hold of me. I'm the most boring guy ever. I take horrible pictures of food. But 
getting a hold of Sunjammers on all of our social media forms and just look, just search hashtag Sunjammers. We're at Sunjammers and through all, I run all the social media accounts. I have help, um, but I, I see a hundred percent of it as well. So if you need to get a hold of me, contacting me through one of those stores or one of those platforms is fantastic. Or just walking through the store, they always joke. I leave at two o'clock every day. It's really two thirty, um, and I eat lunch from twelve to one. I don't get here till ten, so I'm not there a ton, but I'm there all the time at the same time. Um, so I pick my kids up from school every single day, and um, that's super important to me to make sure that I have that family time as well because I really am always thinking about work. So just walk through the store and go. It's Brad here. It's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again for being here today, Brad, and I hope everyone has enjoyed listening to this interview, and we'll tune in next week for more. This week's old news segment comes from the St. Andrews Bay News, Volume 14, Issue 40, published February 26th in 1929, and there is no author listed. Sound Community, Consciousness Essential. The greatest thinkers in the world have realized that values are realities created by the mind and that all consciousness is mental. The creative genius of the individual enriches the world and the consciousness of the community. When it is constructive produces all values in prosperity. The head of a great industry or any corporation or so-called big business sees to it that such principles and policies prevail in the administration and its smallest details, that the greatest constructive harmony is maintained not only with every member of its own working force, but also with the communities compromising the territory in which it exists, functions, and receive its income for services rendered or products sold. The consciousness of the commonwealth, whether it be city-state or the nation, is a mental creation founded on goodwill and constant education of the masses of people as to what constitutes righteous public relations under efficient scientific management, giving the best possible service to the most highly educated people of the world. Thank you so much for listening to Episode 17 of the St. Andrew's Jezebel Podcast. We now have a Facebook page, which we'll share when future episodes will be published, and more information regarding the growth of the podcast. Again, I'm so happy to share that the podcast is available for you to download on Apple Podcasts and also stream on Spotify. The links to where you can stream and download the show will be posted in the comments below. Thank you everyone again for supporting this effort. The intro music was written by me and recorded by Dave Schwartz at Boundless Sounds on the campus of Gulf Coast State College. The show was recorded by me in my music room. Till next time. Keep St. Andrew salty. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew.